Hey guys, what is up? I am Devil Driven. I hope this looks a lot better. I got uh, an M1 uh, Mac Mini. Um, it's really, really cool. I'm really happy with it. Uh, currently, the only problem is, is when I download Gwent, I can't play any games because I'm on the new patch. <laughs> so I can't queue into anything. I can't make any content. Um, so I was just going to go over the cards that we know got changes. Um, and just look at them, you know what I mean? And see them visually and uh, see the changes. Uh, we'll start with the scenarios. Um, Basculus Venom. Just poison a unit now so you can play this um, if your opponent plays something crazy. If it gave you something on the board on top of it, it would be pretty cool. It just having this little you know thing granted you can kill whatever you want if you got a poison in hand but um it, it, it the other ones it seems like they got like a little bonus to them now this isn't random but um we'll have to wait and see i don't think this one's gonna see play um enchanted armor so now it's boost a unit in your hand by three and give it two armor uh i guess you could use this with the new crack card which seems Pretty okay. Uh, not sure how it'll fit into the pirate synergy, but we'll have to wait and see on that one too. I, th I think it's a good change. Uh, carryover can always be kind of kind of wild. I mean, if you don't use it and you want to get out of the round, but you also too have to play a deck that's. I guess too you could play this in dwarves. Um, bump up, say, uh, Bruver or something is a possibility. Um, next one, ceremonial dagger. Damage enemy unit by three and give it two bleeding. Um, this seems pretty good too. I mean, they play something like a boat. You can hit hit it. Uh, it'll kill it in two turns. Pretty efficiently, they have to boost it. Skellige doesn't really have any type of boosts. Um, and it seems like Skellige is probably going to be the number one contender since it didn't really get any nerfs other than the three damage to... Or three bloodthirst to iced. Um, I think this one's going to see play. Um, it seems like it's going to be pretty decent, I think. Uh, Cursed Skull. Which one's that one? Cursed Scroll. Uh, draw a card of your choice and then put a card from your hand to the bottom of your deck. So this is uh, Maxi, the scenario. What's it called? Stratagem. I mean, you get what you want, but you also have to have the tempo to support it. So I think this is going to be like a lippy type thing. Uh, then we got new locations. Locations. Uh, so we got the uh, Land of a Thousand Fables. Resilience. So these carry over now. Um, Deploy, play a special card from your deck, transform special card in your hand into a random unit of the same provision cost from the same faction. Um, so you can, so you can turn like boiling oil into, if you play this, you can get a draug. Um, Cause I think he's the only 13 provision card in Northern Realms. I don't know, that one seems pretty wild. You'll have to look at what card you can possibly for sure pull and if it's an engine or something, that might be okay. Um, I guess you have to play it on the same turn. Transform a special card in your hand into a random unit of the same provision cost from the same faction. So, you, oh no, you would have to have a Nero in hand? This one's weirded weird. I guess you guys will have to explain it to me in the comments. Svalblood Totem's kind of cool. Now it's a Resilience spawn, a Svalblood Fanatic on both sides. And then you could damage later on. Um, I guess you could play um, 
what's his name that damages the little skulls and get some value out of it that way on a carryover play I guess um, these ones are the same armory resilience boost an allied unit by six order give three armor to an allied unit so this another one that you could see well I guess you don't really need devotion in in the dwarf deck so um, maybe that one might pop into the, it's only 6p so I mean giving something armor on a carryover and then boosting it by six it plays for its revisions off the bat that doesn't seem too bad um, all right oh we had the the scenarios for monsters uh, so earn a shadows trigger death wish of an allied unit. so you can use Mirna you can use um, the other one that kills the lowest unit so it seems pretty good granted you gotta have I guess you you only need X amount of death wish units to really support it but um, will you take this over say I mean, do you really want to play those cards turn one, I guess? I guess if you... S s it's only trigger, so you're not killing it. So you could proc it twice. But you are playing a gold card. But those are kind of low provision cards, so... Um, you might see this one and maybe like a Vi deck. Um, you can maybe even spawn the new Foglet. And trigger it. And then do it again. For six turns of Fog. <laughs> Oh man, um, I don't know. I'm, I, I I think it's cool. I think it's cool. Uh, Detloff. So there was some confusion on this one. Uh, so it says, spawn Blood Moon on enemy row for two turns. Increase the duration by one for every adjacent vampire. Order damage an enemy unit with bleeding by one. Death blow spawn an Ekimara on this Ruo cooldown one. So, um, from what I understand, the change to it is it went from one to two. So now you can get up to four turns of Blood Moon, which is pretty good. Um, and then he's an engine on top of it. It's. I think they still need a little bit more vampire buffs, and then it's going to be. Uh, Pretty bananas. Um, next up was Unseen. So he's uh, six power now. Does the same thing. I love this card. Man. I think this card is so cool. Not only because it's a vampire and he's a vampire fan, but um, I just liked it. It 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 rewards you for playing monsters instead of throwing in a bunch of. BS tutors and stuff like that. So, um, really cool card. A lot harder to kill. Parasite range, but um, I'm a fan. I think this card's awesome. Uh, Foglet. So now it's Death Wish. Spawn, spawn Fog on the opposite road for three turns. So you can actually. spawn this for six turns with the stratagem if it all pops off correctly this card plays for six that's 12 16 for four <laughs> I don't think that's gonna happen <laughs> but uh I, I I like this change. I think, like everybody was saying, that it's uh, for foreseeing the day gone awakening, which I'm going to be so happy for, man. I I'm a huge uh, Lovecraft uh, person, so seeing seeing Dagon comes back is going to be uh, be awesome. And it will be the first deck I play because I loved Weather Monsters in Beta. Super cool card. Uh, we also got Ancient Foglet. Now this one I don't think. I guess so. If you get six, it would play for a ten, but one turn would go by, so it would be a nine, a nine for six. 
if you double proc it like that. It's a lot of ifs, though, you know what I'm saying? Like, you gotta get the stratagem, you gotta get this in hand, you gotta get that in hand. If you don't have any weather, like, how are you gonna make this pop off? This one I don't think is as good. I think the, I think the other one is gonna um, light it up. Uh, and then Erding got a buff. Uh, er, Erden. Where are you at? I can't spell. There he is. Uh, spawn Frost on an enemy row for tur two turns. Increase damage by one. Or by frost by one so he's a lot harder to kill still parasite range so in the mirror he might be a little bit easier to kill but six damage i mean unless you're running a hjalmar or something you know it six is hard to come by uh, like they said in the dev stream that rebuke you know can uh it ain't it ain't taking it out no more so really cool um no leader changes with monsters. Uh, Nilfgaard got a leader change. Uh, so we got uh, Imperial Formation. Was it... Imp no, it's... Yeah, Imperial Formation, I believe, is... Um, boost an allied unit by two. Charges three. Once all charges are used, move the soldier to, from the front of your deck to the top. Whenever you play a soldier, give it one armor for each adjacent soldier. So, you could play the crossbowmen and they play, they can get five armor, which, two? No, there'll be four armor. So a lot harder to kill. The, uh, armor is really awkward to deal with because you're not taking away actual points. So if you rebuke it and you got two soldiers on each side, it's only gonna be you know, one damage, that kind of hurts. I mean, granted, you're taking out the damage from the thing, but that's, it feels like pretty bad to be using it that way. Um, tactical decision, Morvern's now a seven, which is pretty cool. And lockdown just got a one point buff on it, which it's still pretty bad. Um, not really that great on that end. Um, ball so now it's fun to us when we play an aristocrat on your side on the battlefield it's going to first man. you can't it's on your side of the battlefield now which if this gets heat waved you just played a 15 for four which it was like that before but stacking your deck with a bunch of low provision fours is kind of going to kill it it's until they get better fours um there's no way you're going to play. I, I don't see you playing it. I don't. Uh, De La Tour and Stefan Skellen. So he's a six. Now, a lot harder to uh, take out. And Stefan Skellen. His provisions go from 10 to 9, so you can renew them if you wanted to. <laughs> They're both, it's still the Elder Bear thing, if they, if they don't die. If, they, if you could put them on the same road behind the Defender, it'd be awesome, but because they're row locked, you're hoping they don't kill one or the other so it's kind of like and then they can maybe kill both of them um the six helps out a little bit you might maybe damien might make a play especially since you can put armor on him now but this one i don't know uh, we got brygef and greemdy greemdy boy so he's he went from uh three to a four and you're triggering adjacent units this is making you play that uh soldier deck and i 
I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I think it's a cheese deck. It's like... It's not even as good as, like, a raucous swarm because it just... I don't know. I don't like this. I I think Nilfgaard's going to be pretty low on the totem pole here very shortly. Um, Northern Realms. So we got some leader changes from Northern Realms. We got... Da, 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 da. Pincer Maneuver. Uh, draw a Northern Realms card of your choice, and then shuffle a card from your hand to your deck and spawn a volunteer in your melee row. This ability adds 16 provisions, two charges. Every time you use it, you spawn a volunteer. Um, so I. I guess you could try to make a Draug deck with it, but I don't think you would, since you would want to use Commandos. Um, not very appetizing. Now, Inspired Zeal is back to the way it was. I think it was a 3 at one time, but now it's 2. Uh, but this this is going to be seen a lot in Draug. I already made the list. Um, I think it's pretty crazy, especially with PFIs being the way they are, which we're going to go over that in a second. Um, Full Test is uh, a really cool card. Uh, he's a 6 for 11. The first time a bronze unit on your side of the battlefield is boosted at each turn, spawn a base copy of it at the bottom of your deck. Devotion also boosts the spawn copy by one. At the end of your turn, boost the unit to your right by one. So he's a engine. He creates carryover with your commandos. He's six strength, so he's hard to kill. Um, yeah, this is this is going to be really good in commandos, or if you want to run that Dun Banner deck, it's going to be really fun. I think you might even put in a siege ladder just to move him around a little bit. Um, <laughs> this looks really fun. I'm not gonna lie. Northern Realms look like it's gonna be a blast. Uh, Queen Meave. Oh, she got. Oh, the the card Meave. Uh, she is a seven, two, two armor, ten provisions. Resets counter after each use. So once it counts down, so you could use this possibly three times in a long round. So it has a higher ceiling. Whenever this unit receives a boost, gain armor. Does she boost herself when she... Boost all allied units by one and reset the counter. So I wonder if she boosts, if she boosts herself, that's pretty cool because she can possibly armor herself up. Nine is... Kind of tough to deal with. It plays under like Gerald range and stuff, but then it's also got that armor. Um, will you pop this in the Draug deck? I don't know. That seems like a big if. I think you're either going to go full test or you're going to go this, but if you pop them both in there and it goes off, man, boy, you're going to have some fun. Um, poor fucking infantries. Now these cards are crazy good. And it brings back the neutral thick and the uh, <laughs> Oh, I love you, CDP. I love you so much. Um, this card used to be like this. Um, and being able to do this with um, Queen Adelia, it's, it's going to be a good time. Um, plus, they're ones. So you're flipping ones. You're making the revenants. The revenants can spawn the one. You got two chances to spawn. To spawn new revenants off of the ones, it's gonna be some some revenant fools running around. I'm telling you. Plus, it boosts itself by three if you have another one. Are you kidding me? <laughs> wow. Um, what do we got next? Uh, Scoyatel. So we got uh, one leader change. Invigorate. Boost five units in your hand by one. Two charges. Uh, this ability adds 16 provisions. So, you can play round one, win. Use one charge, boost some stuff in hand. Cat Witcher or something. Um, 
being able to boost up Gezerus out of rebuke range can be a thing. Um, I think you still play movement with this, but I think it helps. I, I think you play movement over guerrilla tactics with this, maybe. Because the dwarfs, it doesn't make sense because the forge and brewer is just too big of a payoff. I'm not sure where this goes. Maybe it's not movement. Maybe it's just like the the dryad and the, the boosty guy. Where they flip-flop over each other. Getting them out of that range where you can't kill them. We'll see. We'll see. Um... Scoyatel Neophyte. That's the scenario, I believe. No, that's not it. Order transform and spawn a base copy of this unit on the other row. Order. Transform an allied elf into an elven deadeye. So, so you could transform anything. So if it's a one, you get two extra points off of it. You also make another deadeye for um, Vernosiel. I don't know about that one. Uh, Munro. This card's awesome. I'm not gonna lie. I think this card's sweet. You know, it just has basic charges that you can pass. If you don't get that second one with uh, Zoltan, you know, you can save it and maybe proc it off something else. But being able to have options to hold it back for a little bit, I think is really cool. I think this card's awesome. Uh, Skellige. We got a leader change in Skellige, Reckless Fury, uh, split three damage, split three damage randomly between all enemy units, ignoring their armor three charges. So you could still you could do nine damage, but you could split it up. So if you got some engines on the board and there's a problem child, um, you can maybe kill it. You could maybe set up Bloodthirst a little bit easier. Still seems like it's a it's an all in like defender drow play, but there might be other cards coming. Um, the mask was changed. Mask of a Burrows. This this is actually really good. Draw a card, then discard a card, and spawn two crows. So if you have a skirm in hand, you get a card. You play a card for four, and you get four, so it plays for eight, and you got possibly a card you need um, granted it is going to fill up the melee row for lippy which I guess it's a deterrent but um, you're going to have to play a lot of stuff on the ranged, ranged row but this one seems stupid good I mean especially with discard uh, stuff uh, croc and crate and I like this card a lot Deploy, get two armor, get to three pirates or ships in your hand, pull your damage unit by one, cool down two. So, every other turn you can do one damage. So, granted you give two armor to three pirates or ships, granted you have to have those in hand. Um, you're playing this ahead of it, so the next turn you're doing one damage, so that's eight. And then giving the, like boats like the pingy boats and stuff it's still a 10 provision card that you're playing like usually you're playing your boats in round one i guess if you're bleeding you could pop them out and then start playing your boats um the thing is too though like it makes your raiding fleet awkward because you don't want the ship in hand so you almost have to play more boats and I mean, do you really want to give armor to like Morkvarg? I don't know. I think it, it makes you go all in on the boats, but the only ones really worth giving armor to are the the ranged row pingy boats. I like that it's an engine, but it it has. It would be great if you could put it in deck too. 
That'd be really, really good. It might be busted if it was... I don't think it was busted, but... Um, so she's only eight now. She's six strength, so she's hard to kill. <laughs> My question is, if you do have the ice, you discard her with ice, she comes out on the board. You discard with her a card, it goes into the graveyard. And then you can use leader to just kill a ten, but that might seem like... A, well, not really. Because as long as you have, like, great swords and stuff, you could still use... If you... If you did have, like, Yuta in hand or something, that would make up for it a little bit, because she could discard it. I think this card's going to be really good. Um, it seems like you could... I, I, that's what I would try it with. Uh, bear. Uh, this one. Uh, this card's dumb. <laughs> I don't like it at all. Uh, units on the opposite row can't be boosted. If it has Berserk, the only the opposite row is affected. It, it's a seven, but I mean, like, you're going to ping this once. You're going to play it for an eight and then a seven. I don't know. This one doesn't seem like it's going to be played at all. Uh, armor up. It's only 4p. Right here. Uh, damage an enemy unit by two, spawn three butcher students, and then damage. Damage by one. Give him one armor. This card seems like it's going to be pretty good. Um, Arnachad list. Uh, all in witcher list with uh, Vesemir and stuff. Um, let's go over Syndicate real quick. Uh, they had. One leader change, the Pirate's Cove, Sea Jackal on an allied road, two charges. So it gives you two spenders, but now you don't get any coins. Um, and I, I don't know. It, it, I mean, it's nice when you don't draw a spender, but I mean, like, look at these other abilities. Like, you don't get any coins off this, you get a spender. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Um, the Tiger's Eye got uh, a buff. It's a 5 now, which is huge. Uh, Horson Jr. Uh, so he has Insanity now. Devotion to damage. Any unit on the board, not just boosted. Damage a boosted enemy unit by six. Gain a coin for every point of excess damage. Devotion, damage enemy unit instead. Fee three, destroy an enemy unit with three or less power. Um, this card's really good, man. I think it's I think it's a really nice addition to Syndicate, and I love this art, so. Yeah, I'm happy the card is seeing play. Cleaver with his no armor now. <laughs> Card's still really good, but I mean, if you get sniped by a boat, it is what it is. I think you're, you're always playing this in a round two bleed almost every time, anyways. So um, you get it on the board already. So I don't think it makes that big of a change. I mean, people still play Colgrim, you know what I mean? Not a whole lot of people, but um, let's check out the Bersodi brothers. Uh, these cards aren't very good. So it's damage enemy unit by two. If horse is in your graveyard, damage enemy unit by four. So they play for their provisions. And they get their engine to where you can get vitality or thing. If they were 6P, they'd be stupid. You would pop these in every deck, but 7 is kind of awkward. Um, safe crackers. They're, for, they're now um, 3 to 4, but they don't have the uh, intimidation. Uh, Keeper of the Flame, card that no one played. I don't even think you play it in... 
the Cleric Fire Swarm deck. Boost adjacent units by one. Tribute four. Boost all units on this row by one. Decrease this card's tribute by one for every allied cleric. So if you get... You'd have to have four clerics on the row. I don't know. I don't think it's very good. Um, let me know what you guys think. And then they changed the Salamander Mage to have the Mage Tag. Uh, the other changes I'm not going to go over. Uh, they haven't been released yet. I just wanted to... I, I can't make any content until they drop the patch. Because I've, I've downloaded the game three times. And uh, it keeps putting me on this mode. So I'm not sure what happened. But... <laughs> I just wanted to say thank you guys so much. I've been getting a lot of stuff done around the house, and I uh, haven't had much time to make videos and stuff, but uh, now that I won't have to jump through so many hoops of making a video on my older Mac, um, I should be able to put out more videos, so I hope you guys are ready. I'm definitely ready. I'm ready for some new cards uh, in a month or so, and the new ones that they change seem like they're going to be pretty cool, so get ready. I'm ready. I'll see you guys next time.